I'm so pleased to be here, and I'm so honored to be with so many readers and so many writers, uh, especially these amazing writers. Uh, it's it's um, very exciting to work in publishing, but it's v much more exciting to meet people who are in love with books. Um, I'm going to start off and read you a poem. This is a poem that Red Hen published in a book called Palace of Contemplating Departure. It's by a Japanese-Korean poet uh, who grew up in the Central Valley. And this poem for me is about moving to California. And I moved to California hoping to find a literary city. So I'm going to start off with this poem. Uh, the author's name is Bryn Sato, and this is Trembling on the Brink of a Mesquite Tree. And the Lord said, surprise me, so I moved to LA after packing my posters and scrubbing the bathroom and bidding goodbye to the permanent circus. I drove through the south with its womb-like weather, and I drove through the center with its crosshatched streams. And the century unspooled like a wide right road with lines for new writing, and the century unspooled like a spider's insides. The country was a cipher, so I voted my conscience. The country was a carton of ten rotten eggs. The country was a savior come to deliver us from evil, and my car burned a scar across the back of an angel, and yes, I was afraid. No, I've never gone hungry, but I've woken alone with a ghost in my throat, and I've been like the child who's sure she perceives some creature in the dark, some night-breathing thing, and I know there is something I can almost see. But the future is a bright coin spinning in sunlight so fast that it's sparking a flame in the grass. And who knows where they'll find me on which sunken highway. So I'm writing this poem to remember my name. I'm writing this poem to let something go in the mode of surrender since God needs a ritual like kissing needs another or a knife needs the softness of a melon in summer. And leaving New York is like leaving the circus and entering America is like entering a fortress flooded by soda, and we float to the bars in our giggling terror. And driving from one shore across to another, that's one si sign for freedom, one small stab at change. So when the Lord said, surprise me, I moved to LA. So the story of Red Hen um, started when I moved to LA in the late 80s. I wanted to, to come here to go to graduate school. I had, I had four plans. One was to teach at a university, get a PhD, um, have a lot of fun, hopefully get laid, and become a writer. And I, I felt all this should be possible. You know, this is a wine producing state next to a tequila producing country. All looked good. However, I quickly became convinced that L.A. was way too much a film town, and it needed to be a book town. And so at some point, seven years after I'd moved to L.A., I, I was getting ready to start the Ph.D., I had my master's, I, uh, I announced to my group of friends uh, that I was going to make L.A. into a literary city. Everything you own, plus your two kids and your babysitter, all fits in a two-seater car. You may not be well-equipped to turn this into a literary city. I call those people haters. <laughs> I knew that it was possible, but I felt that the first thing I needed to do was get a press started. And so I, I started, you know, I got the press going, and I quickly found out that there was something I didn't, I was not going to figure out how to do myself, and that was designing the books. There was this guy in my writing group who clearly had a crush on me. He was kind of following me around. So I figured I could leverage that and talk him into designing the books. So I said, what are you doing now? And he said, well, I'm designing stuff for the space station. I said, this is going to be a quick segue for you. You can use AutoCAD. You can use PageMaker. So I called, I called Adobe and said, how long does it take to use PageMaker, which is what we use to design books at the time. And they said, it takes about six months. So I told him, look. You want to be part of this game? I'm going to give you the weekend and a six pack of beer. You figure this out. <laughs> so when I came back, he had designed his first book. And I was like, bingo, let's start a press. So we started off, and we moved into this house together. We each had a couple kids. We had chickens. The house had no heat. And uh, it was in the Sunland Tahunga area. And uh, we sold everything we had to get the press going, his car, his furniture. Uh, if the kids were here, they would tell you that for 15 years we had no furniture. We never got a television. There were no video games. So we would get wood delivered and we'd tell the kids, we're working on Red Hand Press. You need to stack the wood. And after they stacked the wood, my four-year-old and six-year-old would come in and say, we did a good job. Could we have soy sauce and rice? 
So, so their story about the starting of Red Hen is we begged for soy sauce. So we got going on this, and in the beginning, uh, the intention was to publish poetry. And within a few years, we realized that poetry didn't sell enough. So we started publishing poetry and prose. And uh, at this point, I'm going to come back a little bit, but at this point, we published 20 to 22 titles a year. We published poetry, literary fiction, and some memoirs. Um, and we have reading series in Los Angeles and New York. We have the Los Angeles Review, which is published twice a year, and we have $5,000 in awards. One of them is a, a $3,000 award, which published this book. Um, in addition to that, we have a large writing in the schools program, part of which is here in Pasadena uh, at Cleveland School. And that's been an amazing thing for us because we've, had, we've now had this for enough years that we've had people who started off in our writing in the schools program and are, have now come in and become interns. So I want to jump forward to the Pasadena part. We've been doing this for quite a while and we live in the valley and we had eventually built a building attached to our house and that housed the press. And I felt that um, my husband and I, we got married because we were fighting so much about the press. <laughs> my husband and I were just playing ping pong in the dark there, working on the press. We had a few people that would come in and help us, but I always felt like it was just the two of us trying to figure everything out. And in 2009, I had a meeting with Mayor Bogart. And guys, good luck on finding a better mayor. He's been fantastic, hasn't he? So we met with Mayor Bogart, and he said, you know, Pasadena's got a lot of things going, but we need a big independent press like Red Hand. We need you to move here. And so we started Wheels in Motion. We started looking for a space. We found a space behind Romans, and we had a uh, fundraiser at the Athenaeum to raise the money to move here. And the mayor came to that. Larry Wilson and Phoebe came. Um, uh, Bob Wyman and Lisa Kruger, the, the Anna Waltz, I can't even remember, but there's a, a group of people. I was so excited when they told me we were in the library that Einstein had been in. I could hardly even hear what was happening. I just was thinking, this is like my Einstein moment. Um, so we raised the money and we moved to Pasadena in January of 2010. And I'm going to tell you, at that point, everything changed for the press. We realized that we were doing something serious because other people were taking us seriously. We'd had an annual fundraiser that had been at the Lux Hotel. When we moved it to Pasadena, we went from 150 people attending to immediately having 250 people attending. And what we realized that was that what we'd been looking for and trying to make in, pa in, in Los Angeles, that what we're looking for is Pasadena. And the rest of Los Angeles needs to learn to do what Pasadena is doing. <laughs> Pasadena has science, technology, art, theater, dance, music. I mean, Pasadena's got it going on. I don't know if you guys even realize how fantastic and amazing all of you are. Um, so we've continued to have successful events at the Westin in Pasadena. I, I, I invite you to come to that. And at this point, when we go to the foreign book fairs, when we go to London Book Fair and Frankfurt Book Fair, the big sign says, Red Hen Press, Pasadena. When the Germans come up, the Swiss come up, they say, Pasadena, I know where that is. There's a parade there. For, for me personally, though, I also want to say that I've always been this energetic person that was kind of a maker in the world. I'm writing and working on opera and running the press. And when I came to Pasadena, what, one of the things that just warmed my heart so much was how kind everybody was, not only to the press, but to me personally. I always remember one of my early lunches. I was meeting with someone who has become a supporter of the press, and she was giving me a check for the press. And she leaned across the table and said, I'm going to give you something to go look up, Kate, and this is going to help you with your future fundraising. I said, OK, what is it? She said, write this down. So I took out my pen and paper, and she said, write down Eileen Fisher. So I thought, wow, OK, maybe this is someone else I should be asking for support or something. <laughs> I went home, and I looked that up, and I thought, that is a really nice way of saying, get on your fancy clothes. So I want to thank all of you for being so amazing to, to Red Hen Press, for being so generous to each of us. Um, 
we've had amazing uh, interns that have come in and worked at the press um, that have been, grown up here in Pasadena. Many of them are going to college back east and they come back here to visit you all in the summer and they've come to intern for us. We're now on North Lake. Um, so we're at the top floor of a bank. We have 3,400 square feet. Any of you who want to come and visit us, I would welcome you coming to visit us. Two of our board members are here today, Bianca Richards and Louise Ritchie. Um, so if you want to know more about, pa about Red Hen Press, please come and see them or me uh, afterwards. And thank you all so much for being book readers. Thank you all so much for having me here.